So don't take it lightly. Don't think, think that stretching isn't something that you should be doing. It's actually really, really important to get your mind and your body and, you know, certainly your arms and your fingers um, and your hands warmed up and ready to go for your playing, okay? So everything doesn't feel all tight. Now, I live in North Dakota, and in North Dakota, sometimes we get 20, 30, 40 below zero weather um, quite frequently, as a matter of fact, in the wintertime. And so the other thing is is making sure that I run my, my hands and my forearms under warm, really warm water. I'll turn on the faucet, get it to um, not hot to where I burn myself, but just really, really warm. And I'll just run my forearms and my hands under that water just to get the blood flowing again, get everything kind of moving. It's a really great thing to do. Again, I don't want to waste your time with it, but it's something to think about. So that's the first step. Now we're stretched out. We're in the right frame of mind. Um, we're ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start just looking at some basic elements that I want you to start practicing on a daily basis. I guarantee you these are going to make a difference in your playing in your life if you do them on a daily basis, but you got to train yourself to do these. They don't have to take a long time. And the first one I'm going to show you is an exercise I call the three minute exercise that you're going to use with your picking hands. So here's what I'm going to do. Steve finally turns on his guitar, right? Okay, so what I want you to do is you're going to find a tempo with your metronome. Let me grab my metronome here. Hopefully you can hear this okay. I'm going to turn my metronome on, I hate being blind, 120, there we go. Okay, so there's my metronome. I'm just doing 120, you could do any speed that's comfortable for you, but I'm going to do 120. Okay, so this is going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just doing a down picking exercise. Now you can speed up the metronome or slow it down relative to what works for you. But the rule is you have got to last for three straight minutes. So you're going to set an actual timer for three minutes. You've got to last that long. You can't come out of the gate for 40 seconds rocking and then all of a sudden you can't do it anymore. If that happens, you're going too fast. Okay. What you're going to do, let me show you. I'm going to turn this back on. Hopefully you can hear this okay. Okay, so I'm doing two per click, all right? I'm lining those up, and I'm going to do that for three straight minutes. Now, flawlessly, as flawlessly as I can possibly do, I'm going to do that straight for three minutes. If I get, usually you'll get about a minute and a half in, and that's where you're going to start feeling it. If you can do three minutes and it's completely effortless, then it's you're either A, doing something wrong, or B, it's just too slow for you. It's, it's, it's not a challenge for you. You got to find the speed that's a challenge for you to where you can finish after three minutes and you can feel the burn, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit faster here. So I'm going to go up to 160. So I got my metro or my timer started. Now, as I'm doing that, instead of just doing it for three straight minutes and getting you bored, as I'm doing that, what I'm concentrating on is loosening up my neck muscles, my shoulder muscles, and my arm and my wrist. I'm not hammering a nail. I'm not smacking. Right, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm relaxing. I'm doing just the opposite. Now, I play a lot of metal, and people get metal wrong. The goal isn't to, like, you know, the goal is to relax. I mean, if you're going to do anything fast, you got to relax. It's like running. you got to be relaxed. So as I'm looking at you, I'm timing, and I'm relaxing. So if you could tell, you probably can't, but if you could tell by just looking at me, I'm barely moving that pick. I'm just relaxing and I'm, I'm not doing this with my wrist and all this sort of thing. I'm just kind of twisting the wrist like this. This is all I'm doing. So I could do this for a long time at this speed. I'm not doing all of this. Again, I'm not, you know, playing the beer quarter game, right? And I'm not hammering nails. I'm not looking for all of this to try and wear that wrist out. I'm just moving it like this. This is all I'm doing. Okay. And I want to do that for three straight minutes. Now, whatever speed is good for me, whatever speed is good for you, we want to be able to do it for three minutes and last that long and feel it when we get done. 
Okay. Now the next step is you got to start logging your times. Now, after you've done this for a week or a month or three months or whatever it is, you're going to have very accurate times. You're going to know every time you grab your guitar, what speed is going to work for you. Okay. And remember the goal is not, the goal is never to pretend like you're doing something. The goal is to really authentically do it. Okay. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. When I was a kid, I used to play, um, um, uh, master of puppets by Metallica. Okay. And I cheated all the way through it. Okay. I didn't do it the way they did it, the way I wanted to do it. I could do it in a way that, um, sounded right, but I knew in my head it wasn't right. And it would have been okay if, if I didn't care, that's okay. I mean, I don't have to do everything accurately. That's not what I'm saying, but I did care. I really did want to do it the right way. I really did want to learn how to play it the right way, but I was physically incapable of being able to do it correctly. And then I got to the point where I started doing some of these practice routines that I'm telling you. And all of a sudden I really, really could authentically play that part, the, the intro of the song, the correct way. And it made me feel so good. Um, because I was new in the back of my mind, I could, I could show people how to, you know, that I was playing it and they'd go, Oh, that's great. You know, but I always knew that I wasn't doing it right. And it bothered me again. If it didn't bother me, then that's okay. Um, you know, I don't do everything accurately, but that for some reason was just really important for me. So this is a great technique to develop that down picking. You do it for three straight minutes. Okay. Now, another thing that you can do, which is a little, it, it's not as strength training as the one I just showed you, but you do exactly the same thing, but now you start working on your alternate picking. Now in a perfect world, if I was able to do two picks or two uh, at 160 for each beat, okay, I should be able to add upstrokes in between and do four that in a perfect world, right? So if I'm going, I should be able to go in a perfect world. That doesn't always work though, does it? Okay. Now if you can, and, and that works for you. You can double up to, to four per click using those ups, then, then start there and start speeding up as needed. Once you truly develop your down up picking, your down up picking will be significantly faster than just your downs. It won't be twice as fast. It'll be way faster. Cause again, I always think of it like running on one leg. If you learn how to run on one leg, all of a sudden, if you add the other leg in, you can go way faster than you were running on one leg. You know, you're not going twice as fast. You're going immensely faster. So once you get into the swing of it, that's okay. I mean, once you get it figured out, you go as fast as you need to for three minutes. Okay.